so I wanted to ask a couple of questions in addition to that about um, your governing philosophy. Um, so perhaps one of the most striking stories of the Trump administration thus far has been the extensive use of executive orders to accomplish President Trump's agenda and things ranging from you know, uh, major immigration restrictions to offshore drilling uh, deregulation. Um, and um, so, so some argue that this trend of expanded executive power, however, um, was in fact paved by the Obama administration, which notably uh, used executive authority to pass agenda items ranging from coal power plant regulation to firearm measures and international agreements like uh, the Iran nuclear deal, for example. Do you think that President Obama's use of uh, executive authority set a dangerous precedent? Hmm. No, I think President Obama was doing the best he could with the authority and the powers he had mm -hmm. to serve our, our national interest. Uh, the biggest problem in our country is the political division. The, the biggest issue I think that faces our country is trust or the lack of it and the way that that has now played out into a uh, House of Representatives that many days appears not to be at all representative of people's real desires. Uh, so uh, uh, as, as well, President Trump, I don't think that President Obama, uh, in fact, I wish President Trump would use his executive authorities to give legal protections to uh, DACA kids. Do you think executive authority um, is a better indicator or, or captures public opinion better than the legislature does? No, I think, uh, I think our republic works best when the legislature can actually function. Uh, when the legislature cannot function or when the uh, legislature, uh, the party and that controls the legislature decides that, only obs that obstruction is the only uh, politically uh, acceptable uh, tactic, then I think President Obama was left to have to do, attempt to do many things by executive order. But no, in the in better days, and there will be better days, our legislative branch will function more uh, more effectively than it is right now. Do you think President Trump's use of executive power to um, uh, uh, impose immigration restrictions to uh, certain uh, Muslim predominant countries um, was an overreach of executive power? Oh, I absolutely believe it was. I, I believe that many of the things that President uh, Trump promised in the campaign uh, were things that many of us thought we'd never see an American president uh, uh, promise or, or set out to do. Um, the, whether it's the Muslim ban, whether it's removing protections for DREAM Act uh, recipients, um, you know, DACA recipients, uh, you know, the, a whole range of things that he has sought to do. I mean, it's a classic sort of, from my view as one citizen, it's a classic sort of playbook of scapegoating people because they're not like us, either not like us because of their country of, of origin or their religion or, or what have you. And uh, I think he's made it very clear the you know, the, the philosophy that motivates his policy choices when he talks so disparagingly about uh, all African nations. And when he said, why can't we have more immigrants from places like Norway? I mean, I think that was pretty clear. Mm -hmm. and, and, but aside from, from disagreeing with those decisions, do you also think that um, they are an overstep of executive power? Well, I think a lot of courts have, uh, yes, I do. And I believe that a lot of courts have as well. I mean, executive, uh, they, they're, they're, there are limits to all authority that uh, our public institutions exercise, and there are checks and there are balances. And fortunately, so far, knock on wood, um, courts have been um, doing a pretty good job of, uh, of standing up to the excesses and at least slowing them down. Um, uh, my next question is, uh, I, I know that you are a practicing Catholic um, and completed your undergraduate studies at Catholic University in Washington, D.C. Um, you've said that your faith informs your views on issues such as the death penalty. Um, however, on other issues such as same-sex marriage and abortion, you have broken from the Catholic Church. Um, how do you decide which issues should be influenced by your Catholic faith 
um, and which issues you draw a line at. Well, let me, let, me, um, let me say it this way as clearly as I can. The, the fact that um, the way I look at public issues is affected by my upbringing and my faith and you know, my, 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 my family, uh, my parents' culture, my grandparents' culture. I mean, all of that is, mm -hmm. all of that is true. That doesn't mean that as a person with an individual conscience, I necessarily come to the same public policy conclusion that say the archbishop of the Catholic Church would come to. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, sometimes the archbishops themselves even disagree on many of those issues. So as a person up, you know, who took an oath to uphold the law equally for all people in a pluralistic society, a people of many faiths, I have to do what, what my duty calls me to do when it comes to the administration, the execution of the law. And in a case like uh, marriage equality, where I concluded that, um, uh, that there was an injustice, and namely the children of gay couples were being treated unjustly under the law when compared to children of heterosexual couples, I had an obligation to change that, uh, notwithstanding the fact that the Archbishop of Baltimore sent me a cease and desist letter. Um, that was his right to do as a citizen, um, but uh, I have an obligation as, I had an obligation as governor, and I always did my very best to discharge those duties, but um, uh, also realizing that uh, my, my, my uh, beliefs when it comes to public policy are very much shaped by Catholic social justice teaching. What are they? A belief in the dignity of every person, a belief in the common good that we share in our individual responsibility to advance that common good, and solidarity, an acknowledgement of the truth that we're all in this together and that we need to help each other if we're going to succeed. Um, so uh, they're all the beauty of our country is that many different faiths come together uh, in, a nation of, in a nation of law, also committed to the proposition that all men and women are, are created equal.